We have been enthralled by the mysteries hidden in Antarctica's frozen waste. Admiral Byrd's story point to a profound connection between the ancient traditions of strange beings living inside the Earth and the modern day UFO phenomenon. Antarctica, with its extreme cold and isolation, is one of the most mysterious places on Earth. The continent is covered in thick ice and is very isolated from most human activity. This is what makes it a source of fascination for scientists and explorers. Recently, a new discovery beneath this icy surface has captured attention worldwide. We are talking about the pyramid-like structure buried deep under the Antarctic ice. Alien theorists who believe there are hidden pyramids might be harboring extraterrestrials in Antarctica. This exciting find raises questions about our understanding of history and the potential for ancient civilizations in this freezing environment. Could this newly uncovered pyramid suggest that advanced societies once existed in Antarctica, or is there another explanation for its presence? Join us as we explore this discovery, its potential implications, and what it could reveal about Antarctica's past. Number one, discovery of the pyramid. The idea of ancient pyramid building societies in Antarctica is not new. It has also fueled various conspiracy theories and speculation, including those about Nazi UFO. Some theories suggest that when Antarctica was warmer and covered with plants, it might have been where ancient people live. Earlier reports in the media suggested that pyramidal figures of unknown origin were spotted in the Ellsworth Massif in Antarctica based on satellite images. Discovered in 1935, this mountain is considered one of the peaks in the rain. In 2016, people became really interested in the Antarctic pyramid. This was after satellite images showed a group of pyramid-like shapes in the southern Ellsworth Mountain, specifically the Heritage Rain. The mountain measures about two square kilometers and rises for 150 feet. It looks strikingly similar to Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza. This is what led to sensational headlines about pyramids discovered in Antarctica. However, geologists quickly dismissed these claims. According to Eric Rigno, a glaciologist at the University of California, Irvine, this is just a mountain that looks like a pyramid. The unusual pyramid-like shape of the mountain is actually a result of erosion. When glaciers melt, water fills the cracks in the mountain, freezes, and expands. This gradually shapes the rock into a pyramid over millions of years. The peak is a classic example of a pyramidal peak or glacial horn. This type of mountain forms when glaciers carve out curved valleys that come together at the top, creating a sharp, pointed shape. The most detectable of these horns often have three or four faces separated by knife-edge ridges called arets. The Matterhorn in the Alps is a well-known example of a glacial horn. Mori Pelto, a professor of environmental science, explained that the symmetrical shape of the Antarctic peak suggests that weathering and erosion have shaped the rock evenly on all sides. Besides glacial erosion, freeze-thaw weathering has also played a role in forming the peak's shape. The triangular shadow cast by the peak illustrates its perfect pyramidal form. Nearby, there are smaller, less symmetrical peaks, including a mini version of the main mountain. This peak is also a nunatak. It's a rock summit. A nunatak is a fascinating geological feature that can be found in polar regions, particularly in Antarctica and Greenland that rises out of ice and is also surrounded by it. Nunataks are common in Antarctica. The term nunatak originates from the Greenlandic word nuna meaning land and tak meaning top, collectively translating to top of the land. Due to the continent's ice coverage and rugged terrain. Nunataks are essentially isolated peaks or ridges of rock that protrude through the surface of an ice sheet or glacier, standing as solitary islands amidst a sea of ice. Despite its newfound fame from Google Earth, the peak wasn't previously hidden. It might have even been visible from the seasonal Patriot Hills base camp. In fact, there are several other peaks in Antarctica with pyramid in their names. For instance, the pyramid in the Royal Society range was named by the British Antarctic Expedition of 1910-1913. Another pyramid is located near Hope Bay on the Antarctic Peninsula. Additionally, there are pyramid mountains in the Quartermain Mountains and along the Ferra Glacier. It is a 9217-foot summit in the Churchill Mountains, also goes by the name 
Mount Pyramid. Number two, did ancient civilizations really exist here? The southern polar regions are notoriously harsh and challenging. Antarctica's extreme climate and thick ice covering make archaeological exploration nearly impossible. This difficulty has given rise to theories about ancient human civilization that might have once occupied the continent. You might not immediately think of Antarctica when considering ancient civilization. After all, it's the coldest, windiest, and driest continent. Temperatures regularly fall below minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit with winds of up to 200 miles an hour. It's seemingly inhospitable, but what if I told you that this frozen land might have once been a hub of ancient activity? There are a variety of theories suggesting that, long ago, Antarctica could have been home to human or even non-human civilization. However, scientists have firmly rejected these theories. Let's break down some of the key claims and why they don't hold up. One of the most frequently cited pieces of evidence is the Piri Race Map. The Piri Race Map is one of the earliest known world maps composed outside of Europe that includes portions of North America. It was created in 1513 by the Ottoman sailor and cartographer Piri Re. This map includes a surprisingly accurate depiction of the South American coastline and appears to show a landmass where Antarctica is, but without ice covering it. This map is very important as it changes our history. Some have speculated that this could be proof of an ancient civilization that explored Antarctica before it became ice covered. It proves that at least parts of Antarctica were mapped when it was free of ice, which means someone explored Earth, Antarctica, and mapped it before it got covered by ice. In reality, the landmass on Piri Race's map likely wasn't based on actual observations of Antarctica. Rather, it was based on the common belief of the time that a southern continent existed to balance the northern landmasses. This idea was prevalent in various maps of the era. Today, ice core research shows that Antarctica was last ice-free about 15 million years ago. This was long before Homo sapiens appeared, which contradicts the notion of ancient human civilizations in Antarctica. Furthermore, even if humans had somehow lived there, surviving in such an icy environment would have been extremely challenging. Another popular theory from 2016 involved a pyramid-shaped mountain in Antarctica that some claimed was evidence of a lost civilization or even alien activity. However, experts explain that the mountain's pyramidal shape is the result of freeze-thaw erosion. This process happens when water enters rock cracks, freezes, expands, and causes the rock to break apart. Eric Rigno, a professor of Earth System Science, clarified that the mountain is just shaped by natural geological processes, not by ancient buildings. Uh, what we call surface mass balance, essentially accumulation of mass as snowfall. Despite this, some continue to point to supposed anomalies in satellite images as evidence of undiscovered artifacts or ruins. Scientists, however, attribute these anomalies to geological phenomena, such as subglacial lakes or unusual ice formation. Tools like deep penetrating radar have yet to reveal any evidence of ancient human activity in Antarctica. Additionally, there are speculative theories based on historical records and anecdotes. These theories often reference vague descriptions of unknown territories and suggest that they might be talking about Antarctica. However, these accounts are usually seen as unreliable and often twisted to support theories of ancient civilizations without solid proof. Most historians and scientists dismiss these stories as mere conjecture. Number three, extraterrestrials in Antarctica. Antarctica is covered by a thick layer of ice, which makes it hard to see what's underneath. Some theorists believe that it's not just the land that's hidden from view, they think there might be more going on in Antarctica than we know about, including both human and non-human activity. Rumors about extraterrestrials being active in Antarctica have been around for years. According to the theory, such discoveries would have been deemed too disruptive or panic-inducing for public disclosure. If these stories are true, could aliens have been visiting us for thousands of years? Let's find out. Meteorites. Rocks from other planets often make their way to Earth as meteorites. Impact craters can show where these rocks landed, but different factors, erosion and plant growth, can hide them. Many meteorites fall into the sea 
which makes them tough to recover. Antarctica is a prime location for finding meteorites. But why is that? Over 50,000 meteorites have been found in Antarctica by research teams from around the world. There are strict rules to ensure nothing contaminates the meteorites. However, one of the most famous discoveries was Alan Hill's 84001, a Martian meteorite found in 1984. This meteorite also led to a big debate. On one hand, some scientists thought it might contain signs of early life, while others thought it was contaminated after arriving on Earth. The rocks they find are kept frozen and analyzed in specialized labs. In early 2013, the Samba team discovered an 18-key meteorite. It is the largest meteorite found in East Antarctica in 25 years. Since 1976, the American-led ANSMET program has been sending recovered meteorites to NASA's Johnson Space Center for analysis. Most of the meteorites found are ordinary chondrites, but they still offer valuable scientific information. While finding meteorites in Antarctica is tough work, it's easier than a space mission and acts like a sample return mission that stays right here on Earth. Pretty neat, right? Nazi interference, UFOs, and much more. Alongside all this serious scientific work, there are plenty of wild theories about Antarctica. Some people claim that Nazis found alien technology. 32 days later, they arrive at their destination, Antarctica. To fly UFOs from a secret base under the ice, while others believe in alien activity and interpret ordinary ice features such as cracks, exposed rocks, and research stations in satellite images. Secretive Cave In January 2015, a former U.S. Navy flight engineer shared some pretty interesting stories about his time in Antarctica. From around 1983 to until he retired from the Navy in 1997, he went on many expedition missions. Some of these also included rescuing people in and out of various locations. While nothing strange ever happened during his earlier missions, he did describe some odd events that occurred during his time in Antarctica. For example, once, when he was flying over the Transantarctic Mountains with his crew, they all saw something unusual. They noticed shiny, round objects moving quickly in the sky. These objects would gather at one mountain peak, then move as a group to another peak, and then disappear. And get this, the strange sight wasn't a one-time event at all. It happened over and over again. Nature probably created this entrance. This is a logical explanation, but there are two strange factors. Another incident involved a medical emergency mission where they had to fly over a no-fly zone. And what did they find there? In the ice, there was a huge entrance to a cave which was slanted and appeared to be going down. He says that the hole was so big it would have been about 200 feet wide in diameter, and when they got close, their equipment started malfunctioning. They also experienced electrical and magnetic problems. The crew thought the hole might be causing these issues. What was all that about? What is that mysterious hole? And why was it kept so secret? As of now, these questions remain unanswered. Number 4. Admiral Richard E. Byrd's Expeditions Little America is a very well-known name in Antarctic exploration. It is tied to a series of research bases on the Ross Ice Shelf. These bases were set up by Richard E. Byrd, a famous U.S. naval officer who played a major role in exploring Antarctica. Byrd was a celebrated explorer and naval officer. In his lifetime, he made several trips to Antarctica, and all these trips took place between the late 1920s and the mid-1950s. In 1926, he claimed to be the first to fly over the North Pole, although there is some debate about whether he actually reached it. Huge boards of wood and large pieces of canvas are sticking out of the iceberg's face. If not, then the honor goes to the Italian airship Norge, which reached the pole shortly after his claim. Bird also gained fame for a non-stop transatlantic flight in 1927. However, his most significant achievements were his Antarctic expeditions, which mapped large parts of the continent. His first expedition, from 1928 to 1930, set up Little America as the first American base on the Ross Ice Shelf 
near the Bay of Wales. This location was important for earlier explorers like Roald Amundsen, who was the first to reach the South Pole. During this trip, Bird explored new regions, including the Rockefeller Mountains and Marie Bird Land, named after his wife. In 1939, Little America III was set up as Bird's base for the United States Antarctic Service Expedition, which was funded by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The plane returns after anxious hours to the expedition's base at Spitsbergen. This mission aimed to boost U.S. presence in Antarctica during World War II. It also set up an east base on Stonington Island. A large vehicle called the Snow Cruiser was designed for Antarctic exploration, but it didn't perform well and was eventually used as a stationary shelter. Little America Through was abandoned in late 1940 as the U.S geared up for war. It involved 4,700 men, 25 aircraft, and 13 ships. Byrd led the scientific part of this mission. This included testing of military equipment and mapping large areas of Antarctica. The operation captured over 70,000 aerial photos. Byrd arrived in Antarctica with what at the time was the most advanced piece of equipment ever built for polar exploration. And mapped hundreds of thousands of square miles. However, it also sparked conspiracy theories about secret missions and UFOs, which are largely dismissed. From this base, work began on Bird Station in Marie Bird Land, which continued into the early 2000s. Little America Fee, like the other bases, eventually came to an end. It broke away with Iceberg B-9 in 1987. This iceberg was later grounded in Commonwealth Bay in 2010, and it's still there today, though in a much smaller form. What other secrets has Antarctica been hiding? Hearing about frozen pyramids, ancient civilizations, UFOs, Nazis, and mysterious holes makes us wonder about what else Antarctica might be hiding. So let's have a look at some of the most interesting discoveries made on the continent, Doomsday Glacier. Did you know that at the bottom of the Earth is the West Antarctic Ice Sheet? It's a huge ice expanse that's slowly melting away as the ocean eats at its base. If this ice sheet collapses, it could lead to flooding along coastlines around the world. One key part of this ice sheet is Thwaites Glacier, which is about the size of Florida. This loss could take place between 2,000 and 13,000 years in the future, although several centuries of high emissions may shorten this to 500 years. This is worrying because the ice might melt faster than we expected. As global temperatures rise, glaciers are melting and sea levels are rising. If Thwaites Glacier collapses, it could raise sea levels by around two feet. This would greatly affect coastal cities and low-lying countries. Singing ice. A massive chunk of ice in Antarctica has been found singing. The Ross Ice Shelf is the largest in Antarctica. It covers more than 500,000 square kilometers and is several hundred meters thick. It is about the size of France. Scientists recently found that the ice shelf creates an eerie song. Trapped seismic waves vibrating across the world's largest expanse of floating ice. Winds blowing across snow dunes cause vibrations and continuous seismic tones. Though the vibrations are inaudible to the human ear, scientists use seismic sensors to detect this sad tune. Researchers have also found that the melody changes with environmental conditions, such as melting or shifting snow from storms. They now use this song to monitor the ice shelf in real time, assessing its stability and vulnerability to collapse through the seismic hum. Ice Fish City Scientists have found the world's largest and most crowded fish breeding colony beneath the ice in the Weddell Sea. This colony is home to thousands of ice fish nests and covers an area of 240 square kilometers east of the Antarctic Peninsula. With apparent ice fish standing guard atop each nest. However, as large as their number is, this massive ice fish colony is more of a farm than a city. Each nest has one adult fish and up to 2,100 eggs. The discovery was made in February 2021 by the RV Polarstern, which used underwater cameras and instruments. The team counted over 12,000 adult ice fish and estimated around 60 million nests in the area. These fish are adapted to the extreme cold with special antifreeze-like compounds in their blood. 
They build their nests by scraping gravel with their pelvic fins. The dense nesting might protect the eggs from predators and is important for the local ecosystem. The enormous river. New research has uncovered a hidden river system beneath the Antarctic ice sheet. This river stretches about 285 miles and drains into the Weddell Sea. It's longer than England's Thames and flows through an area roughly the size of France and Germany combined. Scientists made this discovery using ice-penetrating radar on aircraft. If the edges of these ice masses start to retreat inland, it could make them unstable and speed up ice loss. Thwaites' ice loss contributes approximately 4% to the annual rise in global sea levels. The river system might also influence how the ice sheet responds to warming temperatures. If Antarctica's surface starts to melt like Greenland's, more water could reach the base of the ice sheet. This could potentially speed up the melting process. Blood Falls Despite its name, Blood Falls isn't actually a stream of blood. At first, it was thought to be caused by red algae, but recent research has found an entirely different explanation. The glacier is extremely cold, with an average temperature of 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And even a freaking lake under the Taylor Glacier, all chock full of brine that's super high in iron. And that's what gives the falls their signature red hue. This makes the source of the flow quite mysterious. Radar imaging has revealed a network of hidden rivers and a lake beneath the glacier. And what do you know? It's filled with iron-rich brine. This brine gives Blood Falls its red color. The brine stays liquid because of its high salt content and the heat trapped in the ice. This is what prevents it from freezing solid. This makes Blood Falls unique as the coldest glacier on Earth with flowing water. Giant Sea Spiders Now let's meet the giant Antarctic sea spider. It's an impressive example of gigantism. Growing over 30 centimeters in diameter, the giant Antarctic sea spider is much larger than its European relatives. In contrast, the European sea spider measures only a few centimeters long. These marine arthropods live in the deep Antarctic waters, more than 1,800 meters down, and belong to the Pycnogonida family. It also affects species such as copepods, echinoderms, and some types of mollusks found in the poles. They are often called pantopods, or all legs. They have five pairs of legs, and this is where all their vital organs are located. With a minimal body, they use a proboscis to feed on worms, jellyfish, and sponges. Although they look intimidating, Antarctic sea spiders are quite harmless. They have no venom and don't bite. These creatures have thrived for around 500 million years, evolving into a diverse range of sizes, colors, and shapes, Eulogisca gigantea. This marine worm is like the animal kingdom's version of a mullet. It's terrifying in the front and oddly fascinating in the back. This is Eulogisca gigantea, a scale worm found in the Southern Ocean near Antarctica at depths greater than 500 meters. And yes, it's enormous. This species can grow over 20 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. Researchers believe they are active hunters. The worm has a tubular mouth part that it can turn inside out and fold into its body. When it extends, this proboscis reaches seven centimeters and helps the worm tear apart its prey with sharp mouth parts. When Eulogisca gigantea isn't feeding, its proboscis is retracted, which makes the worm look fluffy and squirmy. Would Antarctica ever become habitable? Antarctica is known for its extreme conditions. In winter, temperatures drop to minus 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds reach 200 pies, and it receives only 6.5 inches of precipitation annually. This harsh environment makes it the least populated continent, with only a small number of scientists temporarily based there. Despite technological advances and climate change, it's unlikely it can even drop as low as minus 80. Despite these extreme conditions that make it seemingly impossible to live here. That Antarctica will support permanent human settlements in the near future. The continent's current climate and terrain are unsuitable for growing crops or raising livestock. And its isolation means that any existing research stations rely on imported supplies. About 100 million years ago, Antarctica did have a milder climate, with forests and diverse plant life. 
Evidence of ancient wildfires, such as charcoal found on James Ross Island, shows that it was once quite different from today. Native grasses, insects, migratory birds, and marine mammals currently survive there. A warmer climate could lead to more plant varieties and increased growth, but forests are unlikely to appear soon. As a result, you will find only research bases from 30 different countries across Antarctica. Antarctica will probably not support crops or livestock in the next century. Melting ice sheets, particularly the Western Antarctic ice sheet, will affect global sea levels and geography. Ensuring that any potential settlements remain above sea level will be crucial. In short, while Antarctica's icy landscape has sparked many theories and sensational stories, science shows that these are just natural features. The so-called pyramids and unusual formations are really just the result of glaciers and ice erosion, not signs of ancient civilizations or alien activity. Even though Antarctica is very cold and tough to live in, it's really important for scientific research. While it's unlikely that people will permanently live there anytime soon, ongoing research will keep improving our knowledge about this unique and changing continent. So, what do you think? Do you believe that the strange things happening in Antarctica are caused by something other than humans, or are you more convinced by scientific explanations? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Goodbye.